So how long does it really take to become fluent in Spanish? One of the things that you have to consider when you're asking this question is, what does fluency actually mean? Like, what's your definition of fluency? Because I think there's a lot of ways that you could go about that. You could consider it like a C2 level. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a European standard of fluency where you've got A1 being a beginner and then it goes A2, B1, B2, C1, and then C2, meaning that you're perfectly fluent. There are other ways that some places will measure fluency based off like an exam exam that you take. But basically being a C2 is kind of like you are very fluent and you can say anything and talk about anything you want to in that language. I will mention though some native speakers might not even get to that level uh, or even be at that level. So there are some measures of fluency where not even native speakers could realistically achieve that level of fluency unless they studied their own language a lot. So some people consider fluency around the B2 to C1 level. I honestly don't even use this scale. So let's not even worry about that for the video. I'm just going to talk about about realistic expectations that you can have to get to where you're having conversations, to where you get a feel for the language, to where you can pretty much say whatever you want, and then to where you don't even have to try to understand things, and you can just pretty much say things without having to translate every other word, and then you can eventually get to the point where you just can improve your accent a lot more. So I wanna mention what fluency, or what being fluent in Spanish, for example, means to me. I believe that you're fluent when you can understand most of what people say to you. It doesn't require a lot of effort to form sentences, meaning that you're not trying to go, I want to go. You know, you're not having to translate every other word in your head. Simply, you can just go, quiero ir, like I wanna go. Or if I wanted to say something more complex, like, hey, yesterday I went to the store, but I didn't buy everything that I needed. Ayer fue la tienda, pero no compré todo lo que necesitaba. It's like, I don't have to think about what I'm saying in order to say that thing in Spanish, right? Now, you may not have a perfect accent. Uh, you may struggle with some words or not know every single word, but I honestly believe that you can consider yourself bilingual and fluent in another language when you're able to do what I just did. You're able to produce whatever you wanna say without much effort, and you can understand most of what other people say to you and just have conversations with people and say whatever you want. That to me is fluent. So, I truly believe you can get to that point within a year, less than a year. I, I was able to do it with Spanish. Once I got to that point, I then focused on getting my pronunciation better and obviously learning more vocabulary and whatnot, just becoming more like as if I were a native speaker of Spanish. That can obviously take a little bit longer, but within a matter of months, and I mean three to five months, I was already having conversations with people in the past, in the present, in the future, in the uh, subjunctive and all this other stuff. So it doesn't take years and years and years and years of study to be able to get to the point where you can realistically have conversations with people. So that's the one thing that I try to preach to people as much as possible is that it doesn't take years. It can take months. Now, I'm not saying that, yes, you can become perfectly fluent within a matter of months and all this other stuff. No, you're not gonna be sounding like a native speaker months from now. It's just not gonna happen. You're also not gonna be fluent in a month either. You may get really good at Spanish or whatever language you're learning within a month. Yeah, that's realistic, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna be talking like a native speaker or you're not gonna be talking easily within a very short amount of time, I'm sorry. Realistically though, I believe that within two to three months, you can be having conversations. Yes, there are gonna be conversations that you struggle to have maybe. Maybe you have to translate a lot of words still, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you're really comfortable with in that language and you don't have to translate it that much either. You should be able to, I believe within three to five months, conjugate in most of the verb tenses. So, you know, past and present, future, conditional, uh, even getting to something like subjunctive, the more complex stuff. I think that you should make it a point to get there as quickly as possible. So I really feel like the first month or so of learning a language is like the getting a feel for it phase. You're trying to figure it out. After you kind of get a feel for the language, you're like, okay, I kind of am starting to get how this works. Then you dive into trying to form as many sentences as possible. You're trying to learn all of these different verb tenses like I mentioned before, so that once you're comfortable and once you know these different verb tenses, 
after a couple more months, you're able to actually talk to people and have conversations. How do I know that this is actually a real thing? It's because I've coached so many people. I've had so many students in my program talking in Spanish, and I mean, not talking like a robot, not saying just hello my name is and hello it's 54 degrees outside. I mean really talking about their day, telling stories, talking about what they're gonna do this weekend, talking about they, what they wish they had done before within just a matter of months. That can happen. I've, I, I've seen it happen and I did it myself. Don't buy into the whole traditional methodology that you have to sit in a classroom for years and years in order to become fluent or even just get to a point where you can have conversations in a language. That might not even be your goal. For example, I know a really good amount of French but my goal is not to be necessarily a fluent speaker of French because I honestly just don't care enough. I know enough French to where I can go confidently to France or whatever French speaking country there is and get by and communicate and I can understand enough. I really just don't feel like putting in the effort that it takes to become fluent. I know that I could and I could do that within a matter of months if I really wanted to but it's just not a priority for me. I don't have the why. I don't have a good enough motivation to do that. So you can just have a goal of like, hey, a few months from now, I think it would be cool to be speaking in Spanish and be able to. And then maybe along the way, you get more and more passionate about the language and you wanna become more like a fluent speaker. That's awesome, that's what happens a lot. But you can get to the point that you're trying to get to where you're having conversations really quickly, a lot quicker than most people think. I truly believe that the reason people can't do it quick enough is a lack of proper methodology. If you wanna hear more about my methodology and what I specifically focused on in order to become fluent within the shortest amount of time possible, I put everything together into a free training. It is specific to the Spanish language, but it's basically how you can learn Spanish and become fluent in under a year. If you're interested in seeing that, click on the link in the description below, and I think we'll get a ton of value out of that. You'll also hear more about my Spanish program at the end if that's something that you were looking to get more information on. Anyways though, learning a language is a lot like climbing a mountain. It's a lot harder on the way up, but once you get to the top, you've got a feel for it. You know all these different verb conjugations and whatnot. The way down is so much smoother, it's quicker. You feel a lot more accomplished by the time that you're on the way down that mountain. So think of learning a language like that. Remember, most of the messages I get are from people that are frustrated. And I'm telling you that just because you're frustrated or stuck on something is not a reason to stop. You'll get to start parts on that mountain that we're talking about where it's, it feels like you want to just fall off. It feels like you've done so much work and you're stuck and you don't know where to climb now. You've got to find a way to keep going and I promise that you will get there. If so many people have done it before you. If other people can do it, why can't you do it too? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight as to my thoughts on what fluency is and how long it can take to become fluent. I really believe that it can be quickly. And that's why you see a lot of people on the internet who do it so quickly. Now, everyone can learn at a slightly different pace. So maybe something that you struggle with, someone else got really quickly, but that person might also struggle with another concept that you found really easy. So don't get discouraged and don't feel bad when people on social media seem to be really good and really fast learners because that's just it, it's social media. It's people post the best part of their day and the best part of their language journey. People don't always post the worst part of their day on social media. So don't start comparing your Spanish to other people's Spanish and all of that. Just do your thing, stay on your path and set goals, right? So like, for example, my goal with French was like, hey, I'm gonna study French for one or two months, get really good at it, and then that's probably <laughs> That's probably it. You probably, hopefully, have a better goal than that with Spanish, which, like I did, where you really want to be fluent, you want to understand the songs, and you want to be able to go to the Spanish bars and talk to people and meet all of the different, you know, people. I wanted to meet girls personally, and it worked out. I thanks to Spanish, I was able to meet my lovely wife. So definitely paid off for me and it can pay off for you too. Please subscribe to the channel. Let me know that you like this type of video where I just sit here and ramble on about these types of topics. Comment below or like the video to show some love and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.